Welcome to Uncorked and Uncut, email marketing friends at home, a vodcast with a new guest each episode, and your hosts, Kath Pei and Ryan Phelan. Hey everyone, hey everyone, question, what's got two thumbs and is the guest on Uncorked and Uncut today? This guy, <laughs> me, <laughs> Was that, would that work? Yeah. That was awesome. Is, that is that, awesome. is that we're, gonna have you, we're gonna have you do intros for the show for like the next season. <laughs> so I get paid. And say, her and her. Yes. Yeah. Well, I could I could do like him and her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, friends, welcome to the uh, uh, season finale Ooh. of Uncorked and Uncut Season One. Um, Gavin is is joining us today from the UK in what I assume is the front of your house. It, it is the front of my house, yeah. Yes, and uh, uh, I am broadcasting uh, uh, virtually from my new lot where I'm going to build a house. This is what it looks like right now. Oh, it's right. Okay, I thought that was a garden, but that's your lot. That's the lot that I'm. We're currently oh. probably two and a half weeks out from breaking ground and putting the okay. foundation done. So okay. Um, and then Kath, nice. you are broadcasting from your gorgeous, gorgeous garden in the back of your house. My back garden, indeed. Yes. Indeed. Unlike so, if, so, so unlike if you're in America or Australia, you'd call it a backyard. But in England, yes, here too. Call it the back garden. Back garden, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Have you got well, Have you got anything growing like fruit there? Yeah, I've got apple trees. It's just been massively pruned because I had been. Over, it hadn't been pruned in a few years, and right. apples were like I literally get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apples every year. Okay. So, so next year it's going to be a lot better, a lot healthier. Um, I've got a fig tree as well, and it keeps on producing figs, but none of them ever ripen because I live in England. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Tree is just crazy, and I've got mulberry. I've got a weeping mulberry bush, um, and it's beautiful. And I'm going to net it because um, unless you net it, all the birds yeah. come and, and have a feast. But I love that. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, sorry so, I, I, hij I hijacked there, Ryan. Sorry. That's okay. It's, you know what? We're, we're, we've never been really rules driven. No, no. Just, okay. it's just hey, okay. let's start the recording. So a lot of people in the U.S. may not know who Gavin is. And I hope for the next 40 minutes, you learn a lot about one of the top thought leaders over in the U.K., uh, who's a friend of myself and, and a good friend of Kath's. And uh, I've just really gotten to know Gavin over the last, well, COVID, COVID brought us together. <laughs> COVID uh, brought us together, yeah. Uh, but uh, just been very impressed with him and, and really excited to dive into this. And, and uh, I understand we're all drinking today. So ah, Gavin, yep. what, is, what, are you, uh, what are you consuming? Um, well, I have to decide because I'm I'm a uh, a whiskey drinker and a rum drinker, and I've also started to get into tequila. Um, it sounds like an AA meeting, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> but um, today I'm having rum, um, and I did want to open my diplomatico. Sorry, I'm saving it for uh, another occasion. But I'm just having some Mount Gay. There you um, go. But not just Mount Gay on its own. I've got a dash of Angostura bitters in in my glass, and I'm going to have some ting with it. So I'm going to have a rum and ting. Okay. Have you ever had a? Ting. You've never heard of ting? Oh well, you're like going to have to go and find it? it. Yeah, yeah. What is it, it? It it's a sparkling grapefruit drink. Oh okay. They have those yeah. over and, here. I don't know. And then with, with a little bit of the bitters in with it as well. Nice. Yeah, a dash of dash of Angostura bitters. Mmm. Yeah, rum and ting. Sounds good. Sounds I'm going to pour nice. myself one now. Kath, what are you drinking? Well, I am drinking. I'm not much of a, a white wine drinker. It's like it really needs to have a good reason for drinking white. And today being 28 degrees here in London, uh -huh. absolutely gorgeous. It's a good reason to be drinking white. So I am drinking New Zealand oh, Oyster, Oyster Bay. Bay. Yeah. Oyster Bay. Yeah, it's kind of like if I'm going to drink, um, if I'm going to drink wine, it's going to be something mm, along the lines of this. Yeah. 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 Well, as for me, it's still morning here, so 
<laughs> One of these days we'll do this in the afternoon and I'll drink like scotch or wine or something. But right now it's uh -huh. just a mimosa. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not judging you. That's, that's all right. It's, much. you know, much. Thanks. <laughs> so cheers. So, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers on the, on the season finale. This has yeah. been a hell of a ride. Well, we'll talk about that later. Gavin, tell people where you come from, what, you're, what, what you do right now. Why, why would people in the email industry know you? Uh, oh, gosh. Um, probably because I'm that awful, awful selfie guy. Um, That's the I, one. I am an awful selfie guy. Uh, no, uh, why would you know me? Um, I work for Dot Digital in the, in the UK. Um, I'm a, uh, a consultant there, um, head of strategy and insight. Um, and I, 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 I joke saying the, the awful selfie thing, but you know, I do a lot of thought leadership, but a lot of that is getting up on stage and speaking to people. Um, and kind of, God, it sounds terrible, preaching the word of email. I, you know what, let me ask you something actually. Do you like the term evangelist? Um. <laughs> no, uh, yes and no. I yes think no. if you, if you, um, if you are qualified to call yourself that, Right. Oh, okay. So okay. People have told me that when I get on stage, it's like going to church. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you, okay. You definitely preach. You preach. Yeah. Okay. And I preach. Okay. And I think if you have that ability to be an ev an evangelist is not just hey I'm going to go out and speak about my company. An evangelist is somebody that can get on stage and give you a reason to believe everything yep. and yep. to motivate you and to get you fired up. And it, and it is kind of a fine line between an evangelist and a, and a, and a homily or a sermon. Um, right. So, so I think if you're qualified to call yourself that, you can. But if you ain't got the chops to be on stage and to read uh, and to give a presentation with a picture or, you know, it, get people fired up in that way, you should. I see, mean, I, I, yeah, go on. No, I was going to say, that I think that's why, because evangelist, in all the times I've ever heard about it, it's always talking about an evangelist for the brand. Now, right. if you're talking about being an evangelist for email, 100% yeah. behind it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. a true thought leader who's out there preaching the word, as all three of us do, right? We preach yeah. the word for email. Mm -hmm. I'm behind it. But evangelist, more often than not, is sort of, you know, uh, I'm the evangelist for this brand. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, do, I, I think for me, for, for me more, it just doesn't sound right. And I, I totally understand what, what, what you're saying, Ryan. You know, it, that's exactly what we do. We, we get on stage, we motivate people, yeah. we get them, get them G'd up for, for doing uh, better and more email. But I just don't know if I just, I don't feel comfortable with the term, maybe. I think that's probably what it is. No. But I mean, I wouldn't even call myself an evangelist because... Honestly, I went to seminary, so it seems a little weird to call myself an evangelist. But yeah. um, it just, I, I, I just, you know, somebody asked me once, how do you want me to uh, uh, introduce you on stage? And just, and I said, a guy who's been on email for a long time and has got something to tell you. I, you know, that's kind of my thing. And then you get I'm on gonna, stage. I'm, I'm going to steal that now. I'm stealing yeah, go ahead. that. Can you ask me again? Ask me again. Uh, Gavin, uh, how yeah. should I introduce you? Um, I think, you know what, it's, it's weird. I just, I just see myself as someone who's been in email for a long time and, you know, like to, like to talk about it in depth. There we go. Perfect. Yep, there, there we go. Done, done. Yeah, that's it. And, that's it. That's what I'm and, using from now on. And take selfies on stage. And, <laughs> and yeah, I take, I take, well, you see, I haven't done that in, in God knows how long now. Um, yeah, because of COVID. I mean, COVID's brought us together, Ryan, but it's taken my yeah. selfies away. Yeah, it's changed a lot. A I, lot. I don't think people really miss the selfies, really. <laughs> I, I used to look forward to them and say, "Oh, look, he's in Sweden." Oh, look. Yeah, look. that's true. We're that's true. All the rest. Yeah, of yeah. Some people were uh, some people were, were were happy to sort of find themselves in them, but uh, really? otherwise, otherwise, yeah, they'd like point like themselves out. <laughs> like, where's Wally? Yeah, where are you? I keep catching my forehead really shiny off this. Uh, of this amazing London sun that we've got at the moment. I That's know. all right. I would take advantage of it because usually it's cloudy and gray. Yeah, and I, there's not a cloud in the sky at the moment. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. 
So Gavin, you mentioned COVID and, and one of the things we asked uh, our last guest last week was uh, uh -huh. Janet Roberts. And we asked her how, because she's such a great content writer, uh, how has the COVID thing changed a lot of the articles she writes on and, and different things. And you mentioned COVID and, and the changes with selfies, but in your, yeah. strateg in your strategies with clients, how much mm -hmm. has that affected it? How much has that overwritten it? How much is that now we're dealing in stuff that's new? So it's, it's you know, email strategy can kind of get stale, but with COVID it's like, ah, let's, let's try some stuff and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird how it's, it's changed things. It's, it's changed things um, for, for some clients who weren't doing anything at all. They weren't really listening. They were like, okay, we can just afford to uh, just spray and pray. You know, um, we, we don't need to, to do anything uh, sort of um, targeted or have any sort of strategy. Um, but as you're saying, yeah, now let's, let's try something out. This is probably a good time for us to, to try some things, right? Um, so that's been great. You know, some clients' eyes have been opened up. And uh, the others, it's, um, you know, they were already taking, taking heed of what we were talking about. Um, so now they're going into even even deeper. They're going into to sort of fringe bits and pieces, maybe looking at some partners of ours that we've been talking to them about that they can help sort of boost um, um, their campaigns at the moment. And yeah, they've everyone's been really open to taking things on board. Even those who have said, you know, right right now we don't really have uh, a, an audience, um, but let's try and speak to to those people that we do have in a way that's actually gonna gonna bring them closer to us get them to understand us a little bit more as a, as a brand yeah so it's, Kath, it's been, i think that, it's been an interesting time yeah Kath, is that have you seen the same thing in your approaches with strategy well <clears throat> it's funny some brands are just so blooming busy like ridiculously busy yeah they're, they're, they're trying you know I, i've had one they, they they paid me in advance for an audit back in in march and they've been so busy, they haven't had time to actually give me all the data that I need to perform mm -hmm. that audit. We're only getting around to doing that now because they're, you know, and it's a big, it's one of the biggest retail brands here in the UK. So they're, you know, because they've had to do a lot of adaption, they've, they've gone in and yeah, so, so it's huge. And then yeah. other brands are still going, actually, do you know what? We're sitting pretty. We already had things quite well in place. You know, we, we've gone in and, made some adjustment to our transactional messages to, to be, you know, altering up for COVID and everything. But we're actually really ready to be taking it to the next level. And we want to be doing some optimization and everything. Mm -hmm. and we're doing that with them. Um, yeah. And then we've had a few clients that are just like, sorry, we can't do any more work at the moment because yeah. everybody is, has been furloughed, <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's been quite, quite, quite different. That's been an interesting one. That furlough piece has been interesting because in some cases, um, you know, a lot of the team's been furloughed. They just want to stop and continue doing, you know, BAU. They don't want to do anything new. Um, um, but in other cases, it's been, I know one particular client, um, it's just one guy left in the team and he is doing everything. So he's, I mean, he's, he's happy to kind of lean on us a little bit and have, have us help him out with a, a couple of bits and pieces. Um, I'm not surprised. And, you know, yeah, we we can't we can't do that for everyone, obviously. But it's just it's just you know you can see some clients struggling and they cannot cannot see uh, you know they cannot tread water long enough. Um, so just just throw them throw them a bone. Yeah. You know, give them a, give yeah. them a lifeline and and try and help them out. Um, and I think that's been a difficult thing with uh, a lot of teams been been uh, been furloughed and you know it's just being like a skeleton staff really. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, go uh, ahead, sorry. Kath. Okay, uh, I've got a question for you, and it's because so I've known you, for, I've known you since you were a young chip, <laughs> you're a young lad. That's, in, that's, uh, to, that's to suggest that I'm not young anymore, Kath. Well, because because we've known each other for that. Right. Long. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. So it sort of goes with it. Um. And so I've seen you rise up, I've seen you develop, I've seen you come on and sort of take more of a presence and certainly, you know, do a lot more speaking and everything. Mm -hmm. And kind of going back to, um, I guess, what we were talking about originally too, because 
when when Ryan Ryan said, you know, he gets on stage, he's got his seminary, you know, experience, and so he does. He preaches when he speaks. Yeah. To some, uh, it's not necessarily a persona, Ryan, because you are still you, and that's yeah. just that's just a factor of you, right? Yeah. yeah. And I've said to some people, it's kind of like it's a persona of me when I speak, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's absolutely true. Because, but you know, because I'm actually I'm comfortable in this kind of a conversation. You put mm -hmm. another two people in it, and you'll probably find I, I shut up, right? I'll be okay. quiet. That's that's too too many you know people for me to feel absolutely comfortable with. Put me in front of 150 to a thousand people. Uh -huh. I'm as happy as a pig in mud. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. So I don't know if it is actually a persona or if it's just a different part of me. Yeah. And what I've noticed with you, um, mm -hmm. Gav, is that you are you are you are you. It's like to <laughs> to me, you on stage is just you whilst talking to you. Yeah. So I don't know that there is a persona either. I just think that you're very natural on stage. You're just you I, know. Yeah, I, I've I've got to say, um, I think my first big speaking gig was in front of I don't know maybe maybe 300 odd people or so, something like that um and that was sort of deep end and there was no one else with with me at the time i remember there were there were kind of three sort of speakers at the company and we had three events going on at the time so um sorry two speakers at the company three events at the time and they were like gav can do it you want to do it gav and i was like yeah i mean yeah yeah okay um <laughs> and it's it's weird you, you kind of gear yourself up to have as you're saying this kind of persona but I realized if I was going to get through this and not be afraid of the amount of people in front of me or looking at me, looking for some yeah. information, um, mm -hmm. that you've just got to be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. It, it, you know, the, the way you present things is it's, it's got to come across natural and, and you've got to speak to people as if they're not idiots as well. So yes. hopefully I don't speak to people as if they're, they're idiots in, in real life. Um, so that's that's what I try and, and try and bring, um, and a lot of it is is down to um, having your own content that you're speaking about. I find yeah. it's difficult to owning it. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult to um, come across as believable as a human being when yeah. you haven't you haven't written the own, yeah. your own content. Um, yeah. So writing your own content um, is is a huge part of that as well. So I, I, I find I find it I find it easy. Sorry, I find it easier. I still get worried before every time I speak. Um, yeah. I get these. I get a little, little bit nervous, and you know, I've got nervous energy, and I, I walk around quite a lot. I can never sit still. Yeah. Um, but it's probably a little bit of excitement as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I enjoy yeah. it. You know, it's funny. So I don't usually get nervous, Me but too. I have a routine. I have a routine before every speech. Okay. That, calm, that calms me down, gets me kind of centered, and gets me ready to go. Well, okay. I was up at Email Insider Summit one year, and that, that event, when I speak at that event, that is the most stressful speaking gig I do because everybody in the audience can call BS on my stuff at <laughs> any point. I mean, you've yeah. got... You've yeah. got it at, at an insider summit. You've got some of the smartest people as smart uh -huh. or smarter than me in there. Right. And if David Baker's in the audience, you're screwed. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, but I was, I was getting ready to give one of the lunch presentations that I turned into a keynote and I'm pacing around and Joel book walks up to me and he says, Hey, how are you doing? And, and I said, you know, I'm nervous about these. They, they always make me nervous. He, he, he pulls in close and he whispers to me and he says, yeah, I get nervous as hell at these things because people could call BS on whatever you're saying. And, and just the fact that somebody like Joel Book gets nervous. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Immediately it was just like, well, Joel <laughs> Book's nervous. I'm fine. You know? Yeah. But I, I think you're absolutely right. If you write the deck, yeah. if uh -huh. you've worked on the flow, if you yeah. know the material and you believe it in your heart, Yes. Then speaking on stage to a thousand people and yeah. is the best high yep. I've oh had since I used to yep. DJ. When I DJed, I would come off the off of the stage and just be just higher than a kite because of all the excitement, yeah. and the energy, yeah. and all that. When I it's come off crazy. of the stage, the bigger the audience, 
the bigger the high. And I just, I love it. I miss yeah. it. The fact that that's one thing that I miss with COVID is I haven't been able to speak on stage for six yeah. months and it's driving me insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. You're, you're right. It's, it's the high you get is, is, uh, it's unreal. And you kind of come off, you're, you're buzzing and you just want to do more. <laughs> yes, you yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to stop. Yeah. Cause I, I used to be a singer, right? And so I'd sing Ooh. on stage in front of, you know, hundreds and thousands of people, well, not hundreds of thousands of people, but hundreds. I was going to say, were, were you a Spice Girl? <laughs> yeah. Why and could not, you give it up? <laughs> so anyhow, so um, I thought it'd be quite easy when I went, you know, speaking. And I found it was quite different. And what, what would happen was, is that once I got to the content bit, the thing mm. that I lived, breathed, owned, slept, you know, dreamt about, all the rest of it, I was fine. It was the introduction that I used to start. My my heart was palpitating so loud. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I could yep. barely even get the vocals to come out because yeah, that yeah. was here. So anyhow, so one time, this is one of my early gigs over here in the UK. I used to do it in Australia and I'd sort of settled in okay, but it was the same thing as what you were saying Ryan is here. I'm now speaking amongst my peers and yeah. that was quite scary. So I was sandwiched in between Della Quiff mm. and Denise Cox. And at the time, Denise Cox, who was with we Newsweaver, was a yeah. very, very renowned speaker. So I'm with these two incredibly experienced, very casual speakers and stuff, both very good friend of mine. And, and I'm kind of feeling quite, and, and Denise said, she's sitting there speaking, goes, are you a bit nervous, Kath? And I said, yes. And she said, of course, you know. And she said, here, have one of these. So she gave me what's called a rescue, rescue remedy. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Okay, I'm glad you said that. I mean. <laughs> yeah. She gave me a volume. She gave me well, a you downer. Could have, she, you could have gone anyway with that, but okay. Yeah, yeah. rescue yeah. remedy. Rescue I know, remedy. I know. But, yeah. yeah, a lozenge, right? Mm -hmm. So she gave me one of those and she said, just suck on that. Yeah. So I sucked on it. And by the time I got up there, it was up. I was like, you know, yeah, cool. Like this introduced myself, got into the content. And seriously, I'm just like, I love speaking. And yeah. since yeah. That, minute, that moment there, I have never, ever been nervous because I know well, how much I enjoy doing it. And I love doing it. I mean, I've heard Sir Sebastian Coe, right? Yes, at, at the O2. Oh wow! Yeah, and and, and I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, you know. I isn't it? Isn't it Sir Sebastian Coe? That's why I said Sir, Sir Sebastian. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you just said Sebastian Coe. So I didn't catch. No, it. I, I included the Sir. Okay. Must do that. I mean, that's the, the, there's all this that you're talking about is is one of the reasons why you know, and it we've come full circle. But one of the reasons why I do the selfie um, is because that initial part when you come on stage for me is the part where I'm probably the most sort of jittery. And it just gets me a chance to interact with the people there. Yeah. yeah. Take a breath and then go. I have the same thing. I start every, and I don't think many people have noticed, I start every uh, keynote or speech the same way. I get on stage and I say, how's everybody doing? And if they reply back kind of weak, I go, how's every, and I get everybody kind of energy up. And yeah. Then I click into it. And that yeah. five second interaction is my, is my intro into the crowd to connect. Yes. To connect, Once yeah. I connect and get them to close the lids of their laptops and get them to, you know, kind of look uh, up and go, oh crap, there's somebody on stage. There's someone that's, here. That's the starter for me. And I think all of us have those starters or those, those things that we prep before, you know, those routines or whatever mm -hmm. um, that makes us great speakers. But there are so many dynamic and wonderful speakers in this industry. It's, mm. it's, it's truly amazing to go to yeah. conferences and see some of these people. My, yeah. my, my only routine is to not go through the deck. Once oh, really? I've created oh. it, I don't look at it again. Oh. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm five I'm minutes rehearse. before. I don't rehearse. If I rehearse, oh. I lose everything. I oh, no, I can't rehearse because I've used the words. Oh. If yes. I use the oh, words, yeah. I'm screwed. Yes. So, but once I've created it, that's it. I, don't, I won't look at it that morning. I won't do anything like that. I just, it just comes on. And then it's, it's mm. like, it's all, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. It's new and I'm, yeah, all the rest of I it. Can't, I can't remember what I do in that respect, but. 
it just kind of comes to me. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have a routine in, in that way, but um, yeah. definitely, definitely the, yeah, just settle myself beforehand. And then I go. I look at, I look at it in terms of flow because I've gotten to the point where most of my decks on keynotes and those kind of things are all pictures with one sentence or one word. Yeah. Yeah. And all I look at is just the flow of one piece to the next and what the connectors the are yeah. between the two. Mm -hmm. But I, I have never sent in a deck ahead of time and said, use this. I always come like 20 minutes before and give them the thumb drive and go, this is the deck, right? They must hate is, you. Oh, no. they. I, I tell them ahead of time they're going to hate me, but this is the way we're going to do it because okay, okay. this is I'm my looking, method. Yeah, that's, this is my that's method. That's when you think of your best ideas is, you know. Yeah. 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 Is right before yeah. I go on stage, if I look at the deck one more time and go, yes, I got to remember this and this and this and this. Well, I can remember I'm at, um, I'm speaking at um, uh, the Email Innovation Summit. And you and Lauren were both going to be doing keynotes after me. And you were mm. there and said, oh, thanks, Kath. I've got something from that. And then you went and changed yeah. your deck because it was, gave you a different. <laughs> it did. I was editing the deck while you were giving it. I'm like, <laughs> See that's brilliant. So, so Gavin, let's switch. Let's switch uh, uh, gears a little bit. So, okay. one of the reasons that I have my new lot in the back is because at the same time you are remodeling, building a new house. Yeah. What do you? What is the story? Re remodeling. Let's say remodeling. Yeah, I I, I bought a place. Um, just literally, I got the keys just as we went into lockdown. Um, so great, great timing. Um. So I've not had a chance to to move in or do anything, and I did want to um, I did want to get uh, the walls replastered, um, and you might have to translate for for the U.S. folk um, when I'm saying replastered, but just smoothed, I guess, skimmed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that was that was the idea, and I thought, great, you know, I can do this during lockdown. I can you know get some guys to come around and do that while I'm not actually in there, and lo and behold we ran out of plaster. You cannot get plaster anywhere. And uh, I've just been trying, you know, you see some pop up online, you think, great, I'm gonna get some. And then they say you can only have like a bag at a time or something. Uh, and then you drive down there and they're sold out or you go online, there's loads of bags there and you know, you're just not allowed to get any at all because they're saving it for trade. Um, and it's just, it's just been a mess. So, yeah. um, well, I, I did plan to kind of be there today and and um, just show you the shell of the place that I, I own. Um, but I don't have Wi-Fi. So, uh, so front garden it is. And I think so let the US benefit, we need to explain how plastering is absolutely essential because we're double brick houses here. As opposed ah, right, to yeah. the different style in the, in the US where you use, you know, your beams. Wood and slats, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the difference, yes. So to translate, Gavin, they don't have studs and drywall. They have brick, lath, and plaster. And when he says he doesn't have Wi-Fi, it's because the UK sucks at hotspots and mobile data. <laughs> oh dear. No, I mean, I, I could, I could do it, but I wouldn't be coming through Crystal like I am right now. Right. And right. and also, you know, I wouldn't be able to sit out in the sun. So this is outside. Yeah. You do have outside. some photos to show us, don't you? Um I, I can I can show you some pictures if you want. Yeah, let's let's see if we can we could we can do this. Um right. I mean you might want to do this in the edit at the end. Actually no, you you're uncut, so you don't wanna you don't wanna do that. We don't we do edit. Don't yeah. edit. Okay. Um unless calf swears at the beginning and then we cut that. But that's uh, I'm, I'm off cat. And I'm, Kath I'm never swears. Yeah. Do you, Kath? <laughs> Do. <laughs> oh God! It makes me see, look like you, a Disney character. You won't be able to see that. No. Can you, can you see that? Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The fireplace. It's, it's and a fireplace. Out with, wall. Yeah. So basically, I am. I'm trying to. Um, uh -huh. I'm trying to have a, a brick feature, exposed brick feature in in the living room. Um, so. So I, uh, I did it all by hand, literally with like some sort of chisel and a hammer and just going at it. Um, and I realized that's a really tough job. So I need to get a tool to help me finish that part off. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so Kathy, if you're, if you're not, if you're not doing anything and you know, you fancy lending a hand, 
Absolutely. You know, my, oh, I'm, I'm you, known, I thought you were going to say absolutely not. I'm known for my muscles and my strength, you know. Yes. Me, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we've even gotten the discussion of me buying it here in the States and shipping it to Gavin. <laughs> because there's no, on one of the calls, we were pulling up Amazon. It's like, how big of a bag can I get, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Desperate time. I think I think Favorite. I... I think I, I think my connection was a little bit funny just then. Yes, it was, but you still your audio came through just fine. Okay, cool, good, good. Yeah. So we have talked about uh, you're the, uh, who's the cook in the house. Oh, uh, it depends. Mostly, mostly my girlfriend. Um, but uh, if there's like a mostly on the weekend, if there's something big we want to do, it's it's, it's going to be me. I mean, if it's a okay. steak, she she can't touch it. She's not allowed to touch it. Um, okay. I'm I'm doing that. Is she a vegetarian? Will she eat it, or she she can't cook it, or she doesn't touch it at all? Oh no, she can cook it. She can cook it. No, no, no. She she can cook it. It's just that I don't want her to do it because I I do it better. Oh, I got yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. your signature dish? Oh, my signature dish. Um, it's just a, it's just a, I'm not, I'm not sure actually, let me, let me think, let me think. I did a beef wellington once that was, right, was incredible. Um, saltfish, fr saltfish, uh, saltfish fritters. Have you ever had those? Mm, yum. Salted, salted cod. Um, you gotta sort of, um, you gotta leave them soaking overnight. Um, and then you make some sort of batter, peppers and, um, Scotch bought it and yeah, prime up. They're real good. So that's nice. a Caribbean based recipe? It is indeed, yeah. Yeah. Cause, Cause that's where your folks your folks are from, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So um my mum was born in St. Lucia. So uh, <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be there in a couple of weeks, but we can't go. Really? Is it still closed? Yeah. Well, no, actually it's open, but um but they're only allowing people to come over and stay in a hotel the whole time. And um, I've got family out there, and that's one of the main reasons to go is to see my grandparents. Oh, um, so, so we're deciding not to go now. Oh, shame. I'm going to be in Antigua yeah. in two weeks. Oh, yeah, just rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> no, she is. I can't go anywhere because I'm a freaking American. And the only well, place we can I mean, go is Mexico. I mean, that's your fault, really. It's not. It's not my fault. <laughs> I it's cannot. In Texas. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a graphic for this one. So it's not my fault that I live in a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh that goodness. kind of makes you look like Satan. I, well, no. <laughs> the seminary would negate that. But um, oh, Okay. Yeah, I can't go. We were supposed to go down to uh, uh, St. Martin this year. And, oh, nice. uh, and next year, my 50th birthday is next year. We're planning on going to St. Martin and uh, I can't, we can't plan it because we don't know what the hell is going to go, what's going to happen. Oh my yeah. God. So yeah. Yeah. It's a joke really, isn't it? It's, we're going to have to wait till probably December or January and see what's left and yeah. book at that point. But I yeah. mean, this is lit. This may be a birthday where, cause I'm going with friends. We're going to like eight people. And, oh, wow. uh, okay. And uh, it may be one of those that's like May. We're trying to find a place to stay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 moving that Saint Lucia flight to next year. So and you know, and fingers crossed, we can actually make that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it just it's bumming me out. So we're we're going to the south of France instead. Nice. Oh, nice. We're at Cannes or. No. So just just south of Bordeaux, it's a place called Acachon. Okay. <gasps> That's like one of my favorite places. That's where I always go. Oh, we got a house there. Yes. <laughs> you mean? What do you mean you got a house there? My uh, my dad's got a place there, so uh, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going to be. What a holiday house! Can I come and stay there? Uh, yeah. Sure. Does your dad live there? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't live there. It's it's um it's uh, yeah. My my granddad lived there, but um the the, the house is just there now. So I'm going to be there, and then my sister's probably going to be there the week after me. And my uncle might go for a bit as well. So it's just, yeah. 
Fantastic. Well, put my name down because that's one I've, I've, I've literally, except I'm going to Antigua, I've literally been craving going to, to the south of France and that's where I always head. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 not a lot of people, well, I say not a lot of people, but I speak to people, they don't really, don't really know it, but it's a great place. Just by the sea, the marina, you've got, um, um, interesting fact, you've got the world's largest, uh, sorry, Europe's largest sand dune um, yep. just south of it as well. And then you've yeah. got the little, you've got the little inlet there, where you've yep. got all the, yeah, yeah, water sports, yeah. And the, ba the 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 buffer, yeah, yeah, it's no, it's beautiful there. Yeah. Oh. Well, that, well, that's fun going. Jealous. I get to. <laughs> I don't get to go anywhere. I get to. Oh. We're looking at vacation spots like in Texas. Hey, but you know how hot is it in Texas all the time? Exactly. Uh oh yeah. Like last week it was uh with the what we call a heat index which is where you factor in the relative humidity in, or the dew point into the temperature. So last week it was mm -hmm. like 107. 107 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. What, so uh, Alexa, are you, are you converting? That's, convert that's 107 that's Fahrenheit that's to Celsius. Yeah, that's over 40, isn't it? 107 degrees Fahrenheit is 41.67 41. degrees Celsius. Jesus. That's impressive. Jeez. Jesus. That's, uh, that's, um, no, the Brits, that, Brits that's hot. Would melt. Brits would melt here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. we. You do realize how we work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how we work, the Brits, is when it's raining and it's cold, we complain that it's not hot enough. Yes. Um, right. And then when it gets hot, we're like, oh, bloody, bloody hell, it's too, it's too hot. You know? Yes. Oh, Tomorrow is yeah. meant to be full sun and thirty-three degrees here. Yep. Yeah. You can guarantee the majority are going to be complaining that's too hot. Yeah. Well, we get we get Lord. we get either people complaining that it's too hot, or you just get instantly people, mostly guys, um, taking their shirts off and walking, <laughs> walking, walking topless. Yeah. <laughs> Brits. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'd love to be there as soon as I can fly somewhere. I've told Kath this before. As soon as as this all clears up, if the Caribbean. And it's London for like a week to hang out with everybody because I miss the hell out of everybody over in the UK and and uh, it's just you know I gotta get I gotta get out of here. Yeah. 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 Oh my yeah. God. Gavin, what do you do for fun? What do you do to relax? You spend all day at um, Dot Digital. I know you're pretty close <laughs> with your your girlfriend and and what do you or you and you both do? Um, so I, uh, I'm big into um, in my music and um, I've got an uncanny skill for, for picking up song lyrics and movie quotes very quickly. Um, and I do love a bit of karaoke as well. I love I think, karaoke. I've, I've seen you there um, after a few drinks at a pub and you're literally saying every single word of every single song. That you, you yeah. you're tuned out of the conversation by that stage. You're just oh, yeah, yeah. music and you're just singing along with all the all the words. I've, I've witnessed. Yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it's that's my thing. I I'm I'm big into that. Yeah. I um I would like to say sports and stuff, but I've just I've just started not not playing sports anymore. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> or running. Or running. Or running. I used to I used to run a bit um, and. I stopped doing that mostly because I destroyed my knee in a uh, in a in a in an, in an accident that was completely all my fault, alcohol related as well. So um, really, I do yeah. think we want to hear this story. Kath, do you know it? Do you know it, Kath? Uh, no, I don't think I do know it. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, it was uh, it was a, a very very sunny weekend last year, uh, Glastonbury weekend. I uh, went out with some friends to try and say, you know, to hell with Glastonbury, we didn't get tickets, we'll go out anyway. And I managed to um, fall into a canal. Oh, no, um, I did. And canals aren't very deep. So I fell in and um, I yeah, hurt both knees pretty badly. I was on crutches for like a, a week or yeah. two. Oh, wow. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so don't drink, kids. <laughs> hey, Just hey. say no. We're, we're coming no, close no. To, to the end, but there's something I want to, I want to bring up. So you were, um, along with Della and Adiola, were on mm -hmm. the Emile and Moore's um, inaugural 
um, Black Diversity Panel. Well, it was yep. actually Hugh Malamore's inaugural panel, but yep. the topic was Black Diversity, which also happened to be the first that I am aware of in the email mm -hmm. marketing industry. Yeah. And you guys yeah. were amazing, really open and candid. Um, it was a difficult topic because it hadn't really been broached before. Um, and what, what has happened since then? What has, because I know that this is, you know, it's, it's not that, oh, great, so everyone's talked about it, so everything's resolved. Yeah. No? Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, everything's resolved. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a very strange year, right? And, um, you know, thanks for, for having me on the, that, that panel for starters, because it was, it was, you know, I remember sort of talking about it beforehand, we, we were going through the motions, what we were going to cover, and it was just, it was just great to see um, that, that, that panel looking, looking the way it did, because um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. You know, I go to, we've been speaking a lot about um, getting on stage and speaking out, um, but usually when I go to events and I speak, I'm the only sort of black person there. Yeah. Um, so it was great to um, to sort of highlight that in in email specifically and and talk about um, talk about what we could be doing to sort of change things around. Um, and you know, I, th I think Della was was talking about it, and it's it's just kind of kind of looking at grassroots, right? Um, I don't know. We, I mean, there's a lot of us uh, in email. We know each other, um, but I think in some ways our little um, our little uh, uh, email community is actually kind of a closed in bubble and most people that I've spoken to kind of fall into it by accident and um, I think we need to do a better job of of getting out to the masses and explaining that there's actually careers in email for yeah. one um, but two um, reaching out to people of, of, of color um, BAME um, and explaining to them that you've got opportunities here and the more people we get in and the more people they, they see like me on stage and, and possibly in, in sort of leadership and management positions, I think the more people will see in our, in our industry that we love so much. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it's great that we've, we, we've, had, um, we've had these talks. I think we need to be talking about it more so that it's not taboo. People don't kind of, you know, cower away from it. People don't kind of go into the corner when, you know, colors brought up um, that we can just speak about it freely and, um, uh, it can it can just be uh, it can just be second nature that everyone has has the opportunity to do exactly what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's all we've got time for, isn't it, Ryan? My God, we, this it, it it feels like we just joined like ten minutes ago. Yeah. Well, <laughs> timer says we've gone uh, our time, Gavin. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us today. If uh, where can people find you? Uh, I hope that over the last 40 minutes, people have gone, God, I got to follow this guy because I follow you and you, you, you've got some good stuff out there. And I look forward to the blog you're going to write next. Um, but where can people, <laughs> yeah. where um, can people find you to follow you? Uh, well, I mean, if you can spell my surname, you can find me on LinkedIn for starters. Um, Gavin Lojani, uh, L-A-U-G-E-N-I-E. It's very simple. Um, and at Gavi Gav, um, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Gavi Gav. So um, uh, yeah, on Twitter, and I, I try to I try to you know be uh, be reasonable about what I say on Twitter. Um, but I, I have some go. thoughts. But there you go. That's yeah. That's all right. it's more than I can say for your president. Oops. Oh. Oh, sorry. More than I can say for my president too, or the uh, president, yeah. not mine. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for joining us this week, Cap. This is the end of season one. Uh, we have had an amazing uh, uh, list of rock stars on the show this season, and uh, season two is is shaping up to be uh, just equally as amazing. And uh, Cap, this has been so much fun just being with you and talking to people, and and uh, thanks for bringing me into the fun. Uh, with all of this. Um, stay subscribed to us if you want. Hit the button down here that says subscribe. Um, and if you'd like to be on season two, uh, send us an email at us at uncorkedanduncut.com. Uh, or if you have a question for Gavin or Kath or I or whatever. Uh, beyond that, I hope everybody has a very safe time out there. Be careful. 
Uh, and remember that thought leadership in the email industry seeks to lift all boats. And so do your part to give back just as Gavin has done and Kath and I have done over the last 20 years. So uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next season uh, on Uncorked and Uncaught. Great. Thanks, Gav. Bye. 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 Yeah.